Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bogish Bethany. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my reading plans for November. In November, I've got a lot of fantastic books to read that I'm quite excited about. One big piece of this is I'm going to be joining in the Skoden Readathon. This is being hosted by Native Lady Book Warrior. I love Kim. I think she's wonderful. And I really love the prompts for this. I think they're great. It's a way to read more Indigenous literature, which you should be doing all year long, but this is a cool way to do it in November. So I'm going to be joining in for that. I'm going to be joining in, so I will give you my TBR for that readathon. But first, let's go ahead and start with all of my book club and read along books that I'm going to be reading this month. First up, I host a book club for patrons and channel members. Every month, some of my patrons get to vote on a book that we read together. The genre or prompt changes from month to month, and for this month, we are reading a fantasy romance, and the book that won was Trick by Natalia Jaster. This is a re-release of what used to be a YA or new adult fantasy romance and is now a fully adult spicy fantasy romance. So we're going to be picking this one up. I don't know a ton about it, but I had heard some really good things about this book in its earlier form. So I'm interested to see what this version ends up looking like. We'll be reading that in November and then having a live show at the end of the month. Then every month some of my higher tier patrons get to suggest and vote on books that they want to see me vlog. The winner for this month was The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. So this should be interesting. I have been wanting to read this and I've heard some mixed things about it since it's come out. I was excited because the premise sounded really great. It's from a Middle Eastern author. It is, I believe, drawing on Arabian Nights if I am not mistaken um but don't don't uh don't quote me on that but it is a Middle Eastern inspired adult fantasy novel that I have been wanting to read and see what I think so I will be reading this and vlogging it for patrons. Then I have two read-alongs that I am doing with Liana over on Chapter 3 Podcast. We are finishing up our year-long First Law read-along and we will be finishing up with The Wisdom of Crowds by Joe Abercrombie and in exciting news we're actually going to do a true live stream for this episode and kind of test it out and see how it goes. If it goes well, we may be doing more live streams in the coming year for a Witcher read along that we're planning for the podcast. So maybe consider tuning in. I am very excited. Oh, and I forgot I got this one signed. I think they had some signed editions uh, last year at Barnes and Noble and I knew I wanted to read it. So I think this might be my only signed Abercrombie book, but I'm very excited to finish up the series and see where it lands. We will also be nearing the conclusion of our Sword of Truth year-long read-along. We'll be reading Confessor by Terry Goodkind and uh, see how that wraps up. And then I think the only other thing that we're doing this year with that is we're reading Dead of Bones in December, which is a prequel novella. So this will be the final full-length novel and we have been doing that all year. The last book that I have for a read-along is Winterkeep by Kristen Kishore. This is for the Graceling read-along I'm participating in over on Mel's channel. I'll have her channel linked down below. Me and her and Kara from A Wild Book Garden have been reading and reviewing these and doing live shows on them. We will be skipping December because of the holiday season and then picking back up in January with the final book in the series, Sea Sparrow. But for November, we're reading Winter Keep. Next up, let's talk about my TBR for the Skoden Readathon, which I'm very excited about. There are prompts for this. There's a bingo board, so you can try to get a bingo. You can do as many prompts as you want. And I basically have have a selection of book possibilities for this. I don't know that I will read all of them, but I'm planning on at least reading two to three, if not more. So here are the books on my pile of possibilities for the Skoden Readathon. First up for a nonfiction selection, I have Making Love with the Land by Joshua Whitehead. This is a nonfiction audiobook that was available as an influencer review copy from Libra FM. This was an easy in for me. We'll see what it is. I didn't look deeply into what this one is about, but hopefully this one will be good. And he is Two Spirit, which is cool because that actually fulfills an additional prompt for the readathon. Then for a challenge of reading middle grade or children's literature, I actually have an arc that was sent to me by the publisher that fits perfectly into this challenge, so I'm planning to read it. That is The Star That Always Stays by Anna Rose Johnson. This is middle grade historical fiction set in the early 1900s following a young indigenous girl who is asked to pass as 
is white when her mother remarries a white man and she has to move to the city and it just sounded really interesting so that is my pick for that prompt. The character is Ojibwe and the author is Chippewa. The next prompt is for reading thrillers or horror. This is the Stephen Graham Jones etc. Like I think some other authors are referenced there. I, I will put the picture up in the corner so you can actually see it. I have several books that I could actually read for this prompt. One is Night of the Living Res by Morgan Talty. This is a horror short story collection that I've heard is excellent but intense to read and kind of traumatic. So we'll see if this one works out but I am interested and I have heard good things about it. It is another one that I have as an audio influencer copy from Libra FM and Morgan Talty is a citizen of the Penobscot Indian Nation. Another option for this and another one that I have as an audio influencer copy is River Woman River Demon by Jennifer Givan. This one sounds interesting. The author is Chicana and Indigenous and it's about a woman whose husband is arrested for the murder of a friend so she must confront her murky past and embrace her magic to find out what really happened that night on the river. Eva Santos Moon is a burgeoning Chicana artist who practices the ancient spiritual ways of brujeria and curanderisma but she's at one of her lowest points suffering from disorienting blackouts, creative stagnation, and a feeling of disconnect from her magical roots. When her husband, a beloved university professor, and the glue that holds her family together is taken into custody for the shocking murder of their friend, Eva doesn't know who to trust, least of all herself. So it sounds really interesting. It's like a murder mystery with some magical elements to it, so that is a possibility. And then lastly, I also have Empire of Wild by Sherry D. Moline. I actually picked this up because I saw Kim talking about it and it sounded really intriguing. It is a horror novel that is reimagining the Canadian Métis legend of the Rougarou, which is kind of a werewolf like creature. So it's another one that's been on my TBR that I want to read. So lots of possibilities for that. And then lastly, I have another anthology that would also fulfill the prompt of reading something by a queer or two-spirit author. That is Love After the End, an anthology of two-spirit and indigo-queer speculative fiction edited by Joshua Whitehead. This one is actually not that long, but I've heard fantastic things about this as a collection. So several things on my potential TBR for that. I probably will not read all of them, but that'll give you an idea of some things I may pick up and, and hopefully give you some ideas if you're looking to build your own TBR. And I have a whole bunch of books for review, some of which I may not get to this month, but again, things are going on my pile of possibilities for the month. Let's start with my physical books. I have one that's not actually coming out until next March, but I might pick it up this month because I think the publisher is really looking for some early reviews. So possibly November. I wouldn't be surprised if this gets pushed back a little bit though, but I do want to read it. This is Chaos and Flame by Tessa Gratton and Justina Ireland. It is the first in a new YA fantasy series that sounds excellent. It says it's a ferocious YA fantasy duology featuring ancient magic, warring factions, and a romance between the two people in the world with the most cause to hate each other. It's by two authors who I like. I am guessing it's probably very queer given what the two of them write. So yeah, thank you to Penguin for this. I am possibly going to pick it up early this month, although it, it it may not happen this month depending on how things go. We'll see. Another one that I was kindly sent a copy of by the publisher that I want to read is Hell Followed With Us by Andrew Joseph White. I have heard that this is incredible but also really intense. It is a YA horror novel by a trans author and yeah, it's about a 16 year old trans boy who ran away from the cult that raised him. I think it's got some supernatural elements to it. And again, I've heard it's very intense, but I do want to read it and I've heard amazing things. Also sent from the publisher is My Mechanical Romance by Alexine Farrell Falmouth, also known as Olivia Blake, author of The Atlas Six. That's a pen name that she writes her adult stuff under and this is a contemporary YA nerdy romance that sounds adorable and it's got South Asian representation and girls in STEM. I really want to read it. Then I have a graphic novel. This is Einstein. It is a nonfiction graphic novel about the life of Albert Einstein, which sounds interesting. This is one I picked up at New York Comic Con. I also have The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. I absolutely love the Witchland series by Susan and this book sounds great. I have a finished copy pre-ordered but I got a ARC copy signed at uh, New York Comic Con as well and I really want to read it early. So I'm going to try to get to this before it comes out. Fingers crossed. Hunt or be hunted. Choose wisely. This one sounds interesting. Small town secrets. It's got monsters and 
I, I don't know, I'm sure it's gonna be great. Then sent to me from tour was The Helm of Midnight by Marina Lostetter. They had reached out to me because the next book is coming out and I hadn't read the first one and I said, well, I am interested, so if you wanna send that along, I'll give it a try. It's being pitched as Hannibal meets Mistborn. It's the first novel in a trilogy that combines intricate world building and rigorous magic system with a dark and chilling thriller. It sounds intriguing, the reviews look pretty good, so we'll see how it goes. Next, coming out in November that I want to try to get to for before release date, but I'm, I'm maybe a little late, is Neom by Lavi Tidar. This sounds really interesting. It says, the inhabitants of a complex desert city rediscover passion while at the brink of revolution. Machines roam the desert in search of purpose, works of art can be deadlier than weapons, and improbable love transcends the sands of time. It sounds really good. It's a sci-fi novel and I want to pick it up. I generally have really done well with the books being put out by Tachyon Publications. They're a small press that focuses on sci-fi fantasy and they tend to publish really high quality work. Then I was sent a copy of Season of Love by Helena Greer. I did not request this but I really really want to read it. This is from Forever Romance and it, I mean like look at the cover. It looks adorable. It is a queer holiday romance. The cozy feel of a Hallmark holiday movie in book form with all the warm queer Jewish holiday vibes you could possibly want, which sounds lovely. Thanks to her thriving art career, Miriam Bloom finally has her decoupaged glitter ducks in a row until devastating news forces her to a very unwanted family reunion. Her beloved great aunt Cass has passed and left Miriam part owner of Kerrigan's, her ironically Jewish run Christmas tree farm. But then she has to work with the farm's grumpy manager. I mean, adorable. I, I really want to read this one. The last physical book going on my TBR for November is The Stars Undying by Emery Robin. This comes out November 8th and it sounds great. It says for readers of Anne Leckie and Arkady Martin, I mean I'm a huge fan of Arkady Martin, comes a sweeping spectacular space opera debut inspired by the lives and loves of Cleopatra and Julius Caesar. It sounds excellent and I'm very excited for it. Lastly, of course, I do have some books from NetGalley that I will be possibly getting to. We'll, we'll see what I can get to. First up, we have Never Cross a Highlander by Lisa Rain, which looks great. This is a historical romance set in the Scottish Highlands with a black Highlander and uh, early reviews look good. I feel like it'll be fun. Then we have Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lees. This is a contemporary romance that looks adorable and is giving me all of the fall vibes. Then we have Counterfeit Courtship by Sanithia Williams. This is the third book in a Harlequin series she's putting out that have been really fun so far. They're about three black brothers who are ghost hunters and the women they fall in love with. I also have Tread of Angels by Rebecca Roanhorse, which is I think a novella or a short novel set in a new world that is coming out. I don't know a lot about it, but I really enjoy her writing and I want to pick this one up. And then if if I'm doing really well, which probably won't happen, these will probably not get picked up until December, but if I'm doing really well, I have a YA anthology called Cool Awkward Black coming out in January, so maybe I'll pick this up, we'll see. And like a couple other ones that are January releases, I doubt much of that's gonna happen because I also have a couple of secret projects that I'm working on. So, you know, lots of things to read. Will I read all of it? Probably not, but that will give you a solid look at a lot of the things on my list for November. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And if you're a question of the day, just tell me about your reading plans for the month. Do you have things that you are leading up into the holiday season with? What do you have on your plate? Are there things you're trying to finish before the end of the year? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.